Hi everyone, it's Kyle again with Ledger um, with another tutorial for you. This time I'm going to take you out into the Solana ecosystem. Um, we're gonna set up a browser extension wallet that interfaces with your Ledger, and we're gonna go out into the world of Solana and see what we can do. Uh, so the place I'm going to start this video is I'm going to start it with a Ledger Nano that has been set up and is has the Solana app installed and open. And I know that's a lot, like getting from where you may be now to here, could be a couple of, uh, it could be a bit of work. So what you're going to do is if you already have a ledger set up and you're using it for say Bitcoin or Ethereum, just go into Ledger Live Manager and install the Solana app and then you're, you're caught up. If you're just unboxing your ledger right now, um, go find my friend Dan's video who tells you how to set up a ledger from scratch, how to install apps, and you'll get yourself fully set up from scratch and get to this point where we are now. So at this point I have my Ledger Nano set up with my recovery phrase in it. I've got the Solana app open and running. And that's where it's just gonna stay. For any of these Solana based or Solana browser based extensions, we're just gonna have the Solana app open. The other half of the puzzle is here. Um, we need to go into our browser and go grab a Solana browser extension. Um, my favorite of which is Phantom, Phantom Wallet. So go ahead and search Phantom Wallet, phantom.app. That looks like the right one. I'll check, it's got the ghost. Yeah, that's that's the guy. Okay, so add to Chrome. If you're familiar with say MetaMask or another Ethereum based wallet extension, it acts very similar. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to like any other Chrome extension, grab Phantom, add it to Chrome. Um, it'll download, it'll install. And then once it installs, it'll disappear into this little puzzle piece menu. And um, I like to go fish it out and pin it just so we can you know, have it available and whatever we're doing. Um, okay, so now it drops you right on its instantiation, like its initialization screen, and we are going to create a new wallet. Uh, much like MetaMask, this uh, phantom wallet will give you a secret recovery phrase. Uh, it, it needs to have a wallet set up inside of it for it to work properly. But this re secret recovery phrase, we're actually not going to use. We're, we are Ledger users. We're bringing our account with us inside the Ledger. So the account that Phantom just made for me, I don't want it. It's not, it's not as safe as my Ledger's account, so I'm just going to ignore it. Um, I'm gonna say I've saved it somewhere. It doesn't matter, I will not use that account. Same here with the password. Um, let me type a little bit better. With this password, it's not actually protecting anything because that seed phrase is also something I don't care to keep. So you can make a you know relatively unsafe password here. It's only just helping. It's just protecting that seed phrase, which I don't care about. And the ledger here is protecting my real seed phrase that I do care about with cryptographically secure hardware, if that makes any sense. Um, okay, so that was it to set up Phantom Wallet. Uh, I just went through the initial setup flow, but I haven't yet told it about my ledger. So. Right here, we have wallet one. Um, let me see if I can change that. I usually like to change these wallet names to be um, do not use, so I remind myself not to use it. Uh, I'll do that in a second here, but let's let's go ahead and do the flow of connecting the ledger. Um, so up, in the, up here in the settings menu, I say add connect wallet. And one of the options here is connect hardware wallet. Um, Phantom Wallet will search, 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 and then it's going to ask to say, I want to connect to a human interface device, a USB device. Um, see down here, my ledger's open and ready, so I, you know, it shows up as Nano X. I'll click connect and continue. And what it's going to do is it's going to derive using the seed phrase inside my ledger. My ledger's not sharing the seed phrase with, with Phantom Wallet, but Phantom Wallet needs to know based on your seed phrase, which accounts do you want to expose? And this is a, a bit of a confusing thing. Like, what are these numbers? What am I doing here? Um, it actually doesn't, these are just rules to say, how do I get from your seed phrase to your account information using a, a set of math? Like which math do I run to get to, from account to seed phrase? Um, I pick the default one. I like, you know, it just, the, the important thing here is that you're consistent. So next time you go ahead and, and set up Phantom Wallet on a different browser, if you pick the same one here, maybe even write it down somewhere. If you pick the same derivation path here, you'll get the same accounts. And it'll be obvious too, because like once you start using your Solana wallet, you will see that it, one of these has money in it and the other ones don't. So I like 44501. 
it's the first option, so it feels like the default to me, but if I'm wrong, I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know. Um, it's not a catastrophic loss, so it'll just end up with a different address if you pick a different derivation path. Um, so we're gonna move on. I picked the first one, I picked let account one, and now Solana wallet should be set up with two accounts. I have um, the do not use wallet one that's based on the seed phrase that, that Phantom Wallet generated for me that I don't like, and then I have ledger one, which is my ledger nano's first account. Um, and so now let's, let's go ahead and fund this account and get it going. So I'm going to take this address and copy that to my clipboard. And I'm going to go over here to my second tab, personal suite. Um, I'm going to go and, and load up some money into this account, a very small amount because Solana's gas fees are so low. I'm going to, I'm going to go small here, but I'm going to go to my Coinbase account and load up my Solana wallet with some funds. So I may speed up this part of the video because like before it took a couple minutes for, for Coinbase to finally send my money, but we'll, we'll come back as soon as it's, as soon as it's ready. Okay, we're back. So uh, in the break there, what I did is I went over to Coinbase and I took that wallet address that I copied from the top of Phantom Wallet, which is my ledger's address, pasted that into the send menu in Coinbase and sent away 0.05 SOL, the smallest amount that it would let me send. Um, so now here we are. I have Phantom set up. Uh, you'll see my ledger's account is D8AP, and that account now has 0.05 SOL that's under my control that I can spend as I see fit. Um, so now we're set up with money. Time to go spend it. Um, I'm going to go take this money to uh, my exchange of choice on Solana, which is, I think it's, at the time of this recording, is by far the most popular or common exchange for uh, Solana. It's called radium.io. Uh, and if you're familiar with Uniswap, it looks very similar. Um, and there's one more thing I need to do in order for the rest of this to work. And that is in my on my ledger here, in the Solana app, there's a settings menu. And in the settings menu, there's something called allow blind sign. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn that on. There's another chance to really hammer the point home about blind signing. Blind signing is where your ledger is le letting you sign any message you like inside the cryptographically secure chip in a secure way, but it lets you sign messages that the ledger itself doesn't know what they are. It, does, it hasn't decoded them. It can't do a good job at showing you what you're signing. And because of that, that's why that setting is off by default. Because even though no matter what, your secrets are not leaving this device, the problem is that the risk that's exposed with blind signing is that somebody can pass your device a message that's not in your best interest, that's maybe doing something you didn't intend for it to do, and tricking you into pressing the buttons and cryptographically signing that anyway. So to protect people, to make it so if you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't happen by accident, blind signing is turned off. But since we have Phantom Wallet, we're taking we're off on this website here, we're sort of accepting an extra level of risk in exchange for being able to use whichever application I want. And so that's sort of where this video is taking you. In order to come with me, you'll have to turn off the blind sign protection. So allow blind signing, yes, is what you want. Okay, so now we're here, Solana app is open, blind signing is enabled or on, and we are at Radium IO. And so the first thing you do at virtually any distributed app is you connect your wallet. Um, Solana actually has quite a few apps or quite a few wallets that, that it supports, including Ledger directly. This is interesting. It lets it lets Radium.io open a USB connection to the Ledger. It's kind of interesting. It's actually it actually works well, and it's a, a decent way to go. Um, just for my brain, for my preferences, what I prefer is I prefer Phantom to be the one connected to the USB device, and Phantom exposes the connection to the apps through the browser extension. Some people might actually prefer each website having a USB connection open on its own, but I prefer the Phantom way of doing things, so I'm gonna stick with this for this tutorial. All right, so I picked Phantom, Phantom Wallet, notice that it woke up saying Radium Swap wants to get your wallet information. It wants to get the public account address. Um, no, matter what, no matter what, the secrets aren't leaving, but it's the public wallet address that's being shared, so I'll go ahead and click Connect. My, my address here, D8AP, is now loaded up in the top of the, the application here. And I'm gonna do a swap. Let's swap 0.05 SOL for, 
uh, USDC. Get some US dollars out of it. And because Sol is the network currency, you never want to spend all of it. Otherwise, you'll end up without enough money for gas to, uh, to continue using it. So I'm going to swap just a tiny amount. I'll get 17 cents of US dollars for 0 0.001 Sol. Looks good to me. Let's click swap. Let's see Phantom Wallet pops up saying, uh, Radium just sent a transaction. Make sure you trust it. You're going to be signing this thing cryptographically, so just make sure you trust it. I do. I, I'm not necessarily telling you to trust this. It may be different by the time you watch this video, but um, I'm trusting this application. I'm going to ahead and click, go ahead and click Approve. What that should do is it will tell the ledger, I have a message for you to sign. The ledger wakes up and it's like, yep, I don't recognize this message, but we have blind signing turned on, so I'm going to let you sign it anyway. Message hash, I can't read that. It's long string of characters, fee payer, that is probably me, and then approve. Okay, so there you go. Transaction just got cryptographically signed inside this ledger. It is being sent to the blockchain now. And if I wait just a bit, there you go, confirmed. Solana is super fast, super cheap. There's a lot to like about Solana. So now look, I have a balance of 0.046 Solana. Soul, and I have a balance of about 17 and a half cents of USDC. Uh, so there you go, not too bad. Um, set up Phantom Wallet, funded my account, went off to Radium and swapped it for USDC, and uh, that's the full stack. So give it a try if you uh, were hearing a lot about the Solana ecosystem and you weren't totally sure how to get started. I hope this video helped out. Uh, thanks, and have a great evening. See ya.